time now for our next community conversation. We are joined by James Dargan, a composer representing the center. Hey there, Steve. All right, Casey, welcome to the studio, to town, and thanks for popping in. Thank you so much. It was a short drive. Yeah, just, just six hours yeah, to get here, right? Oh, but it's worth it. Come on. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about your performance coming up yes. this weekend at the center. Yes, yes. So it's called Oh Glory, and it comes from my upbringing steeped in black musical history. My father is a musicologist, a music minister, a pastor. My mother is a professor as well. So I kind of had no choice. In the blood. It's kind of caught it, you know. And Oh Glory is the name of a song that was written for Bobby McFerrin Jr.'s father, okay. Robert McFerrin Sr., whom nobody usually knows about. He was the first black person to win the Metropolitan Opera auditions, but he did not make his debut until after Leontine Price, after Marian Anderson had sung on that stage. They let him win, but when they saw what he was colored, because he won on the radio, this was back in the right. day, they were like, oh, you know, we'll give you some money and go off to Europe and make but. a career. <laughs> yes, exactly. So. It's this incredible voice, and if any of the viewers out there can, can YouTube him, Robert McFerrin Sr., that voice gave us all of the beauty that McFerrin Jr. gives us now, and McFerrin's sister and his two children are also musicians. <laughs> so that kind of way that music reverberates down the generations, it reverberated and hit me. So I heard this song, Oh Glory, sung in McFerrin's own voice on YouTube, and I thought, oh, this is an opportunity to not only bring to light lesser known black musical heroes, but also bring to light lesser known parts of the history of more well known people like Nina Simone, uh, uh, Billie Holiday. You know, there are nooks and crannies of history that tell us how we can live going forward today. Lots of good stuff in there. Um, what's the Early Music Access Project? So Early Music Access Project is one of my favorite ensembles precisely because they tear down the barriers between people and so-called classical music. They do what's called early music, which is just older, old music, right? And they present it in such a way where they get the community actively engaged in it. So they do things like not only regular concerts, but also have reading sessions where people that are not in their ensemble can just sit in, like slide in like a jazz combo, but it's early music. It's a beautiful operation, it's a beautiful ensemble, and David McCormick has a beautiful spirit. Who, um, who's performing with you on Saturday? That's going to be, I made David join me. So David is going to be on violin, David McCormick. And then our organist for Sunday is going to play piano for Friday, Nicole Keller, Dr. <laughs> Nicole <laughs> Keller. Yeah. I nice. want to get the titles yeah, correct. They're, they're earned, well deserved. Yeah. Um, and uh, tickets still available for this? Tickets still available for both uh, Saturday, which is free, and then Sunday, which is not. Although if you know somebody, maybe you can work something out. <laughs> um, and Sunday is at 7.30 p.m., Saturday, I believe, since I'm singing in it, is at 11 a.m. Yeah, don't, not too early, right? Uh, Got to get the voice ready. I told him, not before 8, <laughs> please. <laughs> hey, well, again, welcome to town. Appreciate yeah. you coming in here and spending a few minutes with us. Thank you, Steve. And it's been wonderful to talk to you. Enjoy the weekend. Hey, thank right. you. I will. Casey? You too. <laughs>